This is my very special documentary video. It is the sad story of Space Shuttle Buran, which means blizzard or snowstorm. The Soviet-Russian demise of a promising space launch system. A technical marvel that could have been so much more but faded away into oblivion. A tale, having nothing to do with political systems, worldviews, or whatever. This masterpiece of engineering and the people who worked so hard on it deserved so much more. When you compare Buran to the American Space Shuttle, at first glance they look the same. To keep them apart, when I mention Buran, it is the Russian one, and when I say Space Shuttle it is American, okay? Perhaps the Russians copied the look of the space shuttle, maybe they came to this shape the same way the Americans did. As this might well be the ideal shape for a craft to return from space. Think of it this way, after a while all the aircraft also got to basically the same shape like you see in all the current jetliners. Because it just is the most optimal build for a fast jet plane. But this is where the similarity ends. When we look at the propulsion, the space shuttle is totally different. To keep it simple, the R-5 space shuttle engines are the ones that lift the shuttle to orbit all the way. Now you will say, what about the solid fuel side boosters? Well they were needed to assist in lifting this humongous fuel tank underneath the shuttle. To an altitude they are no longer needed. Even with all the fuel in the center, the shuttle by itself cannot also lift the fuel tank into orbit. This might be oversimplifying things, but this is basically how the system worked. Buran was designed totally different in the subject of launching. Not only was it about 20 feet shorter, it has no rocket engines for a launch to space. Instead of that, an extensive array of maneuvering thrusters that would make Buran very nimble to navigate in orbit. The heavy lifting was done with a revolutionary, massive powerhouse rocket called Energia, doing all the heavy lifting into space. History has proven, this is a perfect build for lifting extreme loads into orbit it is quite similar to rockets like the Ariane 6, and also the rockets of India, and China, to name a few. Even NASA is using it in their new space launch system. But, Energia was absolutely the first using this combination of a massive center booster, and detaching side boosters. And massive it was, this rocket called, Energia. Most people who have heard of the Russian space shuttle called Buran, think of the only unmanned and successful orbital flight, then was abandoned after the collapse of the Soviet Union, and later destroyed when the roof of its hangar caved in and crushed it. So, for the time being, let us stick to this particular craft. Rehearsing the landing, in the USA, the space shuttle was taken to the stratosphere on the back of a specially adapted Boeing 747 and then disconnected for an unpowered, gliding flight back to its landing zone. Only one attempt possible. In fact the American Space Shuttle, was nothing more than a controlled brick, with wings. In spite of the cosmetic similarity, Buran was really quite different to its American counterpart. The Russians, also had a more pragmatic idea about rehearsing the landings. Their approach, towards landing tests, was surprisingly simple. They just bolted a couple of turbojet engines to Buran, and powered by these, it could take off on a runway, like an ordinary jet. I bet you didn't expect this, right?
Actually it performed quite well for these short test flights. Buran had something else that the space shuttle did not have. It could fly and land totally autonomous. Something that was only later implemented in the American space shuttles, around, or after, the Columbia disaster. Buran also needed to be transported, and at first this was done by a musician of M4 Balmer, NATO codename Bison. But when Buran got heavier this plane was no longer sufficient, so a completely new plane was designed, the mighty Antonov AN-225 Myria. This beautiful plane was later destroyed by the Russians, in the totally insane war they started with Ukraine. Goddammit, why is it always the beautiful things that being ruined? I hate these fucking wars. But there is a glimpse of hope we will see this plane fly again, there seems to be a second, unfinished, Antonov Miria, somewhere. But now back to the Brown shuttle, and there is more. After all, did you think I invited you here, to show you some pictures you can find with Google? Would you like to watch the Buran launch?
This first flight was November 15, 1988. After Brown was tested extensively in the atmosphere with trained pilots, the first and only orbital flight was made without a crew. The craft that did the actual space flight never would see space again. During a period of chaos around that time, on December 26, 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed and the funding for the project was just gone. All the dedicated scientists that worked on the project found themselves without a job, and the whole Brown Enterprise was simply abandoned. Finally this first shuttle was destroyed in 2002 when its hangar collapsed after an earthquake, killing eight people. Seeing these images felt really heartbreaking to me. I really thought, everything was destroyed. But then I learned it was not the only one in existence, and today, three versions of the Buran survive. One, a full-scale test model, is on display at the Baikonur Cosmodrome Museum. The other two, including the shuttle that was scheduled to fly the second mission, are rotting away in abandoned hangars in another part of the sprawling Baikonur complex. Since then, vandals and thieves have stolen and destroyed almost anything of value from the complex, like the copper in the electrical system, electronics, you name it. If it had any value, it is now gone. The Baikonur complex has also been visited by urban explorers, and they created amazing videos. This undertaking is not without risk. First of all you need to get there, and you don't just use your car. It is a long hike to get to the buildings, abandoned does not mean, there are no patrols coming as now and then. All ground floor entries are shut solid, but there are places, perhaps created by others where it is still possible to enter. And then it is still a lot of climbing to reach the shuttles. Here we have a nice view over the huge hangar, where the two shuttles are slowly withering away. Finally we reach ground floor, and can film the shuttles from up close. I must mention, that urban explorers are not there to steal or vandalize, the only purpose is filming things to save these images for prosperity. I think, it is so sad to watch this magnificent craft waiting there, in silence, for the space voyage, that will never come. The camera cannot correctly show, how huge Buran actually is. Earlier some other explorers, even went inside one of the two shuttles. This was before the military removed anything that could be used to climb in.
also the inside of the craft is robbed of most of its valuable components. In the other building is, what seems to be, a mock-up, of the Energia rocket. Walking through this will give you the feeling of being in a post-apocalyptic world, devoid of all life. Again, I feel so sorry for these spacecraft, being gutted and robbed to never in their life to see space. Yes I know, I am sentimental, it just makes me sad. I cannot help it. Here ends my video about the Russian space shuttle Buran and its sad ending. This was it for today, and to protect the identities of the creators of the used videos I will not name them. But just typing, Buran, in the YouTube search screen will bring you there quickly. Furthermore I dedicate this video to my fellow space enthusiast and only patron, Matt. Of the M2M YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and please like subscribe and all that stuff, and I hope to see you in my next video.